In this video, I'm going to look at an NAD model 7240 PE. Customer is unaware of the problem, purchased it used, says it doesn't work. Let's have a look and see what problems we can find on this one. So we'll power the unit up. Make sure the volume is turned down. I don't need to get blown out of the, the shop here. And uh, we'll put it on the tuner. And we'll switch the band here to FM, if I can. AM, FM, there we go. I better hook up an antenna. Doesn't seem like it's going to pick anything up without an antenna. Okay, well, I've got it uh, working here. You submitted? Valve will refund if the game earned. Oh. The new system drops. We have a problem. And the thing is, is that this new One system, I'm not down. saying that this is going to be better. I'm just saying that it, it, there's not much that can be worse than green. You have to try something. Yeah. Even if you can't objectively say this is better, right? Something, anything. <laughs> uh, games Good. that are over 20 years old don't really see a lot of change in their world. Sometimes. Okay, we have a problem with sound cutting out. So the left channel is cutting out, as you can hear. And if I give it a smack, so we. Uh, we have a problem with this receiver. As you can see, we've got a new perspective. There's my Nixie tube clock. I've mounted it over my bench there. As you can see, I've got a new perspective here on the, the, the camera. I can move the camera up and down and I've got a, a nice crane shot here. So now I'm able to put the camera directly overhead and give you great shots like this. So for you guys wanting to see uh, exactly what, what, what it looks like to look straight down on my bench, well, now you're going to be able to do that. As I say, I've built myself a crane and uh, I'm going to be putting the camera directly overhead in future videos. We're just going to get the top off of this unit. I'm probably not going to fix this unit tonight, but I'm going to get it prepped and we'll work on this one tomorrow. And as you can see, it gives a, a whole new perspective to look straight down on the unit being serviced as opposed to looking at it from an angle. If I showed you guys how I made this crane you'd laugh. It's uh, probably the simplest the, the simplest overhead crane that one could uh, imagine. And it's basically uh, made from two tripods. Two tripods, two heads, and uh, a, a zip tie. But it gives me flexibility now that I can put the camera directly overhead and I can get any shots. So now you guys are going to be able to see exactly what I see and the camera's not in my way so that I can see what's going on. The only problem with this is if I stick my head in there to to see something you guys are still going to miss it. But hopefully this will give you guys a better perspective as to what we're working on here and uh, we're going to continue and find out what the problem with this amplifier is. Uh, this this NAD baseball, the last couple of weeks. has a problem where one channel cuts out. We were there a couple of days ago with the one against the Blue Chase at 31 and 31 and now they're 31 and That's 30. not good. Here's the pitch <laughs> outside, ball one, one. We don't like to hear big bangs when we tap the board. We just actually just touch it. Uh, I think we got a bad connection in here somewhere. Um, as you heard before, the left channel was uh, cutting in and out. So I think what the first thing we'll do is we'll get the bottom off this unit and just inspect and see if there's any broken connections. And that certainly didn't sound good when I was just touching the, the filter caps here. That big bang there, I'm surprised it didn't turn my speaker inside out. Let's get the bottom off this unit and take a peek at the board. Um, observe. A 
observe. That don't look good. Do you think that that, well, I'm looking at that and that wire is actually quite long. I have a feeling that from the time this thing was manufactured, they didn't sh they didn't clip that wire off, and that was just sitting there waiting to touch against the uh, the bottom of the case when I tapped it. But look at some of the other stuff I can see on this board here. Looks like looks like cracks, or I guess they're not cracks; they look like scratches. Anyway, let's. Uh, Let's take care of this connection first. Get the get the iron going here and get it warmed up. We'll redo that one and I'm gonna clip this off nice and short and then we'll flip the unit over and just do some more tapping on the chassis to see whether that channel cuts out. I can't see that being what was causing the channel to cut in and out. I'm thinking more along the lines of a switch or a control or even maybe a relay that's causing that, causing the one channel to kick out. But uh, certainly, this is the problem and as you can see it has touched if we look at the uh, we look at the chassis here it, it actually has shorted the ground and that would have been a problem that existed from the time this is manufactured I don't know how well it shows up on camera here but when I when I look at this th this one pin is significantly longer than the other so it wasn't clipped properly when they manufactured it this should have been cut off. If I cut it, you'll see that, uh, where am I here? See how much I took off there? So that was the problem from the factory that that didn't get clipped off and it caused a short. Even though there's a rubber spacer over here, if you look on the board here, there's a rubber spacer that's right here and this is supposed to, this is supposed to keep the base uh, from, from getting too close, but as you can see, it's become compressed over the years. You can see the grooves in here, and those would be from those would be from the slots here, right? So this is supposed to keep the board compressed, but that was long enough that it was actually sticking out and touch it made contact. But I'm going to redo that connection. It's all burned black there. So we'll start with that one. These other ones over here are just looking at them closely there. And that, those are just scratches, they're not cracks. Okay, now that I have repaired... Really? Check this out. So, I just... <laughs> uh, what in the heck is this? Okay, you can see this wire is capped off and they've got a crimp connector on there, but this big boot. Okay, that just was stuffed along the side of the transformer there. I don't know what kind of, I don't know what point that serves. I guess it's just, now we can call it double insulated. Okay, now that I've got the, uh, we got another one over here over top of the power switch, right? Double insulated. Um, now to get the unit back together, I'll turn it on. This thing doesn't appear to have a speaker protection relay because we heard the thump there when the amp come, come up. Ah, uh, see, we still have a problem. It appears to be. That's the input selector switch back here. Watch this. So either we have a switch that's at fault, or we have connections underneath that are bad. So let's turn it off. Let's go back and uh, take a quick look at that switch, which is over here. Let's 
stick your horn where the sun doesn't rise. Let's go back and take a closer look at this switch here. So here's the switch that I'm Great. Okay, power. So here's our I think we'll resolder that switch and see whether it's just a connection. Actually I'm gonna get in there with my magnifier and, and take a close look at that and see whether it actually is a broken connection or whether it's a, a switch problem. Okay, let's resolder that switch and see whether that'll make a difference with this one. Also, uh, it's not showing up on camera, I'll just reposition the camera here. I'm going to redo the, the connections here at the back of the, uh, of the board where the inputs are. But I'm going to redo these connections back here as well, and then we'll test it one more time. And see whether it's made any difference to the left channel cutting in and out. Okay, I've got those connections done. We'll turn the power on and see whether we've uh, made any improvements. Here are the two channels are working now. Oh, still doing it. But not to the same degree it was doing it before. I think we're getting somewhere. Where I'm tapping now is right in this area here. Was it? 
Now it's gonna make it wire over. But a few of these other ones in here look to be questionable, so I'm going to do those as well. Like this one. And this one. Get some black oxidation on the, the actual lead itself. I get a burn off. And now I gotta compete with a lawnmower. Before anybody jumps over me saying that these pins are bridged, yes they are. They were like that before. So I'm just leaving them the way they were. Obviously they're bridged for a reason. These are the drivers. That one there looks to be bad. A couple more down here, I don't look too swift. This one here looks bad. And this one here, not too swift. Whoops, that's no good. We don't want that. We'll take care of that in a second. That's a bit of a bridge I created right there. A lot of these connections that just don't look good. They got cracks on it around them. All these ones in here have got little cracks. one here it's got a big crack right there if you can look at that one if you see that one it's got a crack around the middle the middle pin here on this transistor same with this one and this one here and this one down here One of the reasons we have connections that are failing like this is this was uh, made in the era of uh, wave soldering and many times the larger connections for some of the, the bigger components like power transistors and stuff just didn't get enough heat put on them to make a good connection.
I'm going to clip down a couple of these other leads here. That one that did short out to the, uh, the base, there's other ones in the vicinity here that are just as long or they're too long. So I'm going to take these other ones down as well because I don't want to have it short out. There's a few of them here that they really, you know, there's some of them are a good quarter inch long. And that's just too long for leads that, you know, that could possibly touch. So we'll clip those ones down. Make a couple more here. If you notice when I spot something with the magnifier that I'm having question as being maybe a faulty connection, I'll put my finger on it so that I don't lose track of it while I'm looking for the iron or while I'm looking for uh, my solder and stuff, right? So that I don't lose track of it because when I, obviously when I take the high power magnifier away, um, I may lose track of where it is. it again and see whether it works. machine here play some royalty free music on this thing and uh, see how it sounds song.
Okay, there's one last thing to check on here. We'll check the AM, FM, and then we're going to put this unit together and I'm going to hook up a turntable and we'll test it and see how it makes sure that the latch out. But I'll test it for the turntable before I put it together. That makes more sense. Uh, we'll just check it to the tuner again. That's uh, AM. And that works so now we're just going to hook up a turntable and try the turntable out. Before I play the record, I'm just going to say for the eight people that are going to give me a thumbs down on this video, because I know that you people are going to do it no matter what, uh, you know what, if it makes you feel better, and if it, if it makes you feel good about yourself to thumbs down my video, then by all means, give me the thumbs down, okay? Uh, it, it just shows the rest of the world how small you are, but if you know if that is if that's what you need to keep yourself from jumping off the nearest bridge or something for another day, then if it makes you feel better, by all means, give me a thumbs down, okay? Let's uh, play a little bit of classic Monty. Oh, my turntable had other thoughts. Okay, let's play some classic Monty Python. I can't play this for too long, but... Sit on my face and tell me that you love me. I sit on your face and tell me why I love you. This record has been skillfully crafted by British comedians using ancient, well-worn, classical hand-tooled jokes. Any complaints about the humorous quality of this album should be addressed to British Airways, Ingram's Drive, Redditch. Henry Mr. Simpson, ah, welcome to mouse bat follicle goose creature ampersand spong wap caplet loose liver vendetta and prang. Now, ah, Mr. Simpson, 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 French is it? No. Ah. Now, I understand you want us to advertise your washing powder. String. String, washing powder, what's the difference? We can sell anything. Go ahead. Of course, a national campaign. Useful stuff, string, no trouble there. Ah, but there's a snag, you see. Due to bad planning, the 122,000 miles is in three inch lengths. So it's not very really useful. Well, that's our selling point. Approved. The wave of the dull drudgery of workaday tidal waves. Use Simpson's individual flood preventers. You're mad. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Sex, sex, sex. Must get sex into it. Wait, I see a television commercial. There's this new woman in a bath holding a bit of your string. And a dog admiring the Archbishop who's blessing the string. Uh, international flavors missing. Make the Archbishop Greek Orthodox. Why not Archbishop Makarios? No, no. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Classic uh, Monty Python. It doesn't. It, classic Monty Python. It doesn't get any better than that. On vinyl, of all things. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.